whenever time individuals or institution stop other people from living a normal life for example education housing jobs that is racialism prejudice plus power let's put it in you know straight terms prejudice i suppose feeds on ignorance once we make personal contact then it becomes easy for us to explain that we are not a burden we are also contributing to the society and we have something to offer as well three views on the effect and meaning of racism they come from people living in southwark a london borough with a black population of over 40000 nearly 20% of the total blacks here will argue they're victims of racism that they're denied equal rights and opportunities on the basis of color they'll point out for example that the black or ethnic communities are concentrated in the center of the borough in peckham and east dulwich other areas like bermondsey and former dockland rotherhithe traditional white working class strongholds in the north and northeast of the borough and generally upper middle class dulwich village in the south remain almost exclusively white these are old established close knit white communities whereas the middle of the borough is not and this is where blacks are allocated housing and it's a black population which is very much aware of racial issues the community as a whole is racist i mean the white community as a whole white people i am sorry to say you but in the, in the, from the bottom of their heart they don't like us it's stupid because i mean we we'll live we've got to live together don't we but I've got some coloured people living next door to me and they're absolutely superb. A more beautiful girl you'd never wish to meet. But I know the hatred is there, segregation is there, all that jazz. Black people are stereotyped, mugging, um, criminality. There is a, a sort of vicious circle of uh, disadvantage, really, which is difficult for people to break away from. Um, and you're really asking people to be exceptional to be able to break away from that circle. So racism is felt to exist, but how it is perpetuated is much harder to identify. In an effort to alleviate the problems, Southwark Council has set up a race equality committee and a race unit. But even so, there are still difficulties. Deputy Leader Graham Geddes. The evidence would suggest that uh, black people in the borough have generally a worse uh, service from the housing department in terms of where they live. And getting a job from employers like the council or from others in or outside the borough is more difficult for blacks. In Southwark, jobs are scarce and unemployment over 20 percent. Now, when I talk about unemployment, at the end of that scale you always find it's black unemployment that's really the eyes. You do hear about incidences where uh, coloured people, Asian people, go for jobs and you know, they're not accepted because they are Asian or coloured. And that same job for someone maybe not as experienced or educated is accept taken, white. yeah, the white person is not it. accepted. I think there are a lot of evidence that prove that the, those people with qualification, even if they fight much harder or have higher qualification to compete with um, the white counterpart in terms of job. It's at school that black and white rarely get together for the first time. Is this where racism begins, as many teachers believe? The children know that we won't tolerate racism as far as we can. But out of school, there's obviously a lot of racism. And we just have to do our best to put over our angle to the children. Diana Kennedy, acting headmistress of Brunswick Park Junior School. London schools have been asked to take positive action to help their children avoid racism. The Education Authority, like Southwark Council, felt the problem to be so serious and so complex that it must be watched for in every aspect of school life, from textbooks to playtime. There is now great emphasis on anti-racist teaching. On the whole, we, we like to think they all get on very well together. They seem to play, they work together, 
They mix in all sorts of ways together, just occasionally there's, there's brushes. But usually it's nothing to do with the actual racial issue, although the names might be racial. Usually it is just a way of getting rid of frustration, and that's one way that they find they can use words. Um, we do try and pick up any points that are made in any books that are read. Uh, we have got rid of the, the books and the texts that are obviously racist, but there are times when a writer has used words that we want to say to the children, this is the way words have been used, we don't use them now, and you know why we don't, and perhaps explain again why we don't like certain words being used or certain ways of, of using phrases. Another Brunswick Park teacher, Jill Webster. We also try to deal with it more positively in the curriculum by trying to stress some of the differences that may be between races, but the similarities that there are also between people. And at the same time, making them aware of the sort of diverse elements from which they come, so that they have some sort of respect for the different elements rather than regarding them as negative. So one part of the system is taking steps towards creating a more equal society. But to work, this must be carried to every corner of life outside. But still, teachers argue that theirs is a positive step in the right direction. Another step, say blacks, would be the appointment of more black teachers. In many London schools, they are none at all. So anti-racist teaching is carried out mainly by whites. And we have found that there are a lot of differences amongst what we ourselves think about. But we're all trying to go the same way as a staff and trying to do the best for the children. But sometimes the ways that we want to go about it have got slight differences to them. We shall If racism is to be overcome, attitudes must be changed dramatically. Will these children grow up to be different? To regard racism as appallingly unjust and irrelevant and unacceptable. We've got a, a mixed bunch of kids from all sorts of different walks of life and from all sorts of different cultures and I think in that respect we're perhaps a bit luckier than many other schools. But I think my other schools where there isn't such a mix don't always learn very much about each other and therefore don't acquire the same sort of respect. The benefits of anti-racist teaching will only bear fruit in the future. But what of the present? It is bleak, say the black community, discrimination is all around us. In vital areas like employment, we often end up with the worst jobs or no jobs at all. Southwark's mayor during 1983 and 1984, Sam King. When the young black or anybody is unemployed, you are bitter. And especially if you are not equipped for the community, you are a loser, and they know that. You do not have to tell them. Most of the young, unemployed youth, black, minority, and host nation are bitter. We've maybe adapted a bit to actually living with nothing, but we've got children now. And we don't want our children to have the same rough living where you, you're literally a second-class citizen. If you're going to be a lawyer, for example, I mean, if you've got a choice between a black lawyer or an Asian lawyer and a, a white lawyer, the chances are that uh, most people would pick the white lawyer. Are any of you aiming to be lawyers? No. Well, I was thinking of it at one time, then quite a lot of people discouraged me because, you know, they say uh, there's, uh, because of the fact that uh, you if you've got the choice, people would rather take a white lawyer. These strong feelings of constant rejection by what's seen as a white system lead to hopelessness and anger and a feeling that it isn't even worth trying. But it is possible to succeed, like the Capital News Agency, established with council help. It's run by Marjorie Francis and Carol Bright. We operate on the basis that we are journalists. We've never seen colour as a handicap. I see it as a gift. Um, I've, we, we don't 
crawl into Fleet Street apologetically. And mm. We go into Fleet Street and we talk to people one to one as one journalist to another. That's how we approach all the news desks. So it has never handicapped us in other words. In, in fact, we've used it to our advantage, being women from ethnic communities, um, some people would think would, would go against us, but we have used that to our advantage, being different. We're not run-of-the-mill journalists. Um, if you go to Fleet Street, you will see people that all look the same, that all write the same, that all think the same, that drink in the same pubs. We're, we're different, and we have used that to our advantage and it's worked. But it's no good just being different. You have to be good. We're different and, and good. The agency operating from Carol's front room is a success, but it is a rare example run by two determined people. Most blacks tell a different story. They accuse the council of discrimination. What is it that brings this charge against an avowed equal opportunities employer who provides so many local jobs? Sid Hercules, Southern Council for Community Relations. It's still got a long way to go before it has proved itself to be an equal opportunity employer. Um, the whole of Southwark's um, employment policies would have to be looked at. The housing um, policies would have to be looked at. Um, and it's, in other words, it's got a lot of work to do before it. it could be regarded or, or could be accepted as a full equal opportunity employer. Graham Geddes has some reasons why. I think in a, a large organisation like a local authority, uh, you will find at the present time most people will uh, not see themselves as being racist and uh, will think that because they are not individually racist, the organisation of which they collectively make up is not itself racist. I think the evidence is that in terms of our equal opportunities employment policies or perhaps their, their lack of development at the present time, how many blacks do we have in top management jobs for example, there is evidence to suggest that the institution acts to prevent uh, the development of racial equality in employment policies. Because the black communities look to the local authority for support and help the attitudes of the council really matter to them. The problem is that no council can achieve miracles alone or that quickly. Meanwhile, the ethnic community's grievances grow. Take housing. Southwark controls nearly 70% of all the properties in the borough. So it's in a unique position to influence where people live. The accommodation on offer ranges from former GLC estates to those it built itself in the 60s and 70s. Nearly a third of its properties are classified as hard to let. Nearly all of these are in the areas with the highest concentration of ethnic groups, Peckham and East Dulwich. One estate, North Peckham, has 1,010 flats. Here, 30% of the tenants are black. The council controls housing allocations and many blacks feel there's a deliberate policy of placing members of ethnic groups in unpopular, run-down estates. Tony Ritchie, one-time chair of Southwark's Housing Committee, now leader of the council. You know, I don't want to be rude in answer to a question. I think if, you are, if you're asking me, do we deliberately have a policy of discriminating, I think it's a daft question because I don't believe that anybody would seriously say that a Labour council with a track record as Southwark would do that. We don't do it. We would abhor anybody even suggesting that we do it. There are problems. The problems are within our allocations policies and that's what we need to be tackling. We place, in my opinion, too much waiting to residential qualification, to periods of time on the waiting list, and not enough on the basis of housing need. Allocations in a borough like Southwark with 63,000 properties, many of them in areas like we are now, in the semi-high rise area, high density living, are, um, are not particularly desirable. Allocations in those areas is a very, very intricate th problem and we need to get it right. We can't go back and tackle it and alter the whole system again in another 12 months time. So we are spending time looking at getting that problem right. Altering the allocation system may make it more fair, 
But there are those like Councillor Orban Graham who believe there's a deeper problem. I hear some allocators saying um, we uh, do not discriminate and we give black people a fair deal and this is what they ask for. But my question to an allocator is, would you have offered a black person a flat somewhere in Dulwich? And the reason why, sometimes black people tend to say, oh, well, I'll take that, is because what they're offered, and they know, no matter what happened, they're not going to be offered anything else. Southwark's Director of Housing, John O'Brien. We've always said we've got 18 to 20,000 difficult to let properties. Um, and certainly a proportion of those will be let to coloured families. But of course, up till now, we have not kept any ethnic records. So we have no idea uh, of how many ethnic families are on this estate or that estate. The evidence aren't there for anybody to see anyway. You don't need figures. I mean, the way the balance in terms of um, the, where the council are not meeting the needs or not sort of going towards the um, difficulty that black people face is evidence for, their, for anybody. You just have to walk around and look um, in North Peckham Estate to see how many black faces you see there. Now, I suppose if the name is absolutely clearly identifiable, and let's be honest, half the names are not clearly identifiable, um, I suppose if a, if a person had a real racist streak in them, they could say, well, I'm certainly not going to allocate that nice property to a person with that name. I do not believe it takes place. Southwark isn't the only borough accused of putting its ethnic population in the worst housing. The recent report by the Commission for Racial Equality on Housing in Hackney came to the same conclusions. Conclusions which have now been generally accepted as true for all London boroughs. But accepting is one thing. Doing something about it is another. Southwark officials deny overt racism, but nonetheless, discrimination can exist. In the face of this, the black community have come to believe the British people will never really accept us. We're just too different. It's not just colour, but culture that is the stumbling block. Whites are mystified and unsettled by the ethnic community's reluctance to abandon their languages, customs and traditions. The blacks reply, we need to retain them. They're part of what we are. In Southern, the Vietnamese, the Turks, the Asians and the Afro-Caribbeans all celebrate and maintain their cultures in different ways. Many are difficult for whites to understand. But, say the ethnic communities, you could at least try. You can learn from us just as there is much we have to learn from you. Jim. Good morning. How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Perhaps the strongest and most resilient ethnic group in this country are the Asians. For them, the retention of their culture in Britain is vital. We, we are more Pakistani than we are English. We don't look English. We look Pakistani. And if we just... Um, try and be English, we won't be accepted into the English society and we won't be accepted by our own people. So we want to learn about our own culture and then teach it to the English people, to share it. If we don't, you know, learn about ourselves and teach other people, we're going to be left very confused because, we, you know, we won't know where to turn. We won't, we, won't be, we won't really be accepted by the English society or the black society. We'd just be left in the middle. <laughs> But that's the position in which most Afro-Caribbeans find themselves. Their traditions are close to British ones, but they feel rejected by its society. Their response is to form black-only groups. It's a recognition of the fact, they say, that since no one else will do it, they must help themselves. But to do this, they need money and premises. The view of unity, which meets in a run-down building in Peckham High Street, is that they look to the council to provide both. What we try to do most of all is to create things for people, really, then do. Because at this present time, we haven't got any funding to do anything at this stage. But we've put proposals for things that we'd love to do to the council, but we haven't got any direct reaction or positive reaction at this present moment. 
Now we're in a position where the membership put demands upon us that really and truly we, we will have to make decisions soon on how we're going to satisfy our membership or we need some form of commitment from the council to actually give the membership a reply to their demands. Unity is an example of how the Afro-Caribbean community is trying to meet its own needs. The proliferation of similar groups set up to help specific problems of all the ethnic communities is a testament to the alienation they all feel. Southwark has a network of these organizations. They exist as a kind of second level social services. Some have funding or other help from the GLC and Southwark Council. Nearly all of them run by volunteers working on a shoestring. Their aims are to provide the services black people need and don't seem to get anywhere else. One such group is the Southwark Muslim Women's Organization, which meets in a former school. It's run by Najma Shah. The services have not developed in response to the needs of this community, so we had to do something within our own means through the community network. And we are successful in a way, but still there is a long way to go. The resources are very limited. And we are quite disappointed by the lack of awareness on the part of institutions, authorities, to even identify our needs rather than. And there isn't any attempt to, pro to develop the resources according to our needs. So what does Southwark Council, with its race unit and its race equality committee, think it can achieve in the face of beliefs like we're second-class citizens, it's not our problem, we're not wanted here. This is a social crisis with no clear-cut answers. Chair of the Race Committee, Councillor Madden Kalia. The specific aims of the Race Equality Committee are that we should remove the discrepancy which existed previously that the, that the ethnic minorities were not giving their rightful share of the facilities and amenities which are offered by the council. And the Labour Party manifesto for the election had indicated that it will be our aim when we come uh, in the town hall to redress that uh, imbalance. And what we are trying to do is that the ethnic minority should have an access to all the uh, facilities and advantages which the general uh, population has in Sadak. The committee has already given substantial money in grants. It's also appointed three race equality advisors to the housing, employment and social services departments. They'll advise department heads on the best ways of erecting services to satisfy the needs of ethnic minorities. But surely this is just scratching the surface. The present council is very sincere in its aims of giving equality to all the ethnic minorities. And although we have a wishful thinking that it should achieve all it wants to achieve, but it will take a long time for us to achieve, and we have made a good start. On occasions, one might uh, come across evidence of, of direct racial discrimination uh, by uh, people who are employed by Southwark Council. That is extremely rare uh, and taken very seriously uh, when it is brought to the attention of members. That, to me, is not uh, the problem we face as a local authority at the present time. The problem we face is finding ways of addressing uh, the rather more insidious forms of racism uh, that are perhaps more difficult to pinpoint and label. Uh, and these are the sorts of racism that, that result in uh, discrimination in the way services are distributed. Many black groups fear that Southwark Council is wasting its time trying to change the unchangeable. But there are others within the communities who disagree. They say, you have to start somewhere. There are certain procedures, routine practices, customs, which leave Asian people at a disadvantage. 
and we cannot combat those because they are too difficult to tackle. We can just create an awareness about those structures which pr promote discrimination. And I think you've got to educate people not to act or behave in certain ways and um, not to think or perceive black people or this is what they're good for, this is what they want. They need equal opportunities to all the provision that are within the um, barrel. We need at the present time to give priority to anti-racist efforts. Uh, but I think in the absence of a clear understanding of how anti-racist policies would redress the institutional racism of the past, we must be somewhat cautious in the way we move forward. And I have a feeling that uh, the step taken by the Southern Council of appointing a race quality committee is a step in the right direction. And uh, this is uh, uh, a good start in creating that kind of harmonious relationship which uh, uh, is desired both by the white communities and by the black communities and other ethnic groups.